Welcome to our mostly unscripted and unedited podcast. I'm Paula Kidd, nutritionist. And I'm her sister-in-law and bestie, Sarah Kidd. We love discussing all things related to health, including mindset, self-care, nutrition. Join us as we share coffee, laughs, recipes, and random thoughts tossed in for good measure. (laughs) You'll leave each conversation feeling motivated and with actionable strategies that you can use right away to improve your health and help you stop feeling fat, foggy, and fatigued. See you there. All right, here we go. Okay. Here's our unscripted, unabridged, unedited, (laughs) unedited podcast pilot. Yeah. So we've just been dealing with tech issues for the last, I don't know, hour and getting a little frustrated. So Mm. we're just going to do it old school. Yeah. No idea if it's going to sound good, but it's the message that's important. So here we go. So what should we, what should we start with? What are, well, first of all, what are we drinking? Yeah. Let's always start with that. Okay. You want to go ahead? Sure. You know what? We should say who we are first. Oh, let's do that. (laughs) Wait, what we're drinking is actually not the most important thing. (laughs) I am Paulette Kidd. I'm a registered holistic nutritionist and you are? I am Sarah Kidd, Paulette's sister-in-law. That is my official title. (laughs) That's right. Those are my credentials. So, right. <laughs> and guinea pig. Yeah. Professional I'm, guinea pig. I'm a professional yeah. guinea pig. Yeah. Which we'll explain in a minute. Yeah. So Sarah's husband and my husband are brothers. We are not related by blood in any way. And I want to tell the story after we get through here, about how like our first weekend together, which you don't really remember, but okay. I think it's kind of funny. Okay. So now what are we drinking? So I am having a coffee. This is my new favorite mug that my friend made for me. Oh, she made Um, it. Yes. She cricketed it. So this is cricketed on. She found the mug at the dollar store and I am a teacher. So this is also kind of my introduction, but so I like this kind of chalk on a chalkboard look. Mm -hmm. And then I also love the office, the TV Mm -hmm. show. And this font really reminds me of the office. So this is my little mug that summarizes a little bit about who I am. And inside my coffee is it's a bulletproof coffee inside my mug. I mean, normally I drink coffee with cream. 18% is my favorite, but today I'm trying butter and MCT oil. And I learned something. I learned that if you froth it, it actually emulsifies and it, it tastes like a creamy coffee. Oh, the MCT uh, oil. Is it oil or powder that you're using? It's a powder, but okay. it, it's the butter that makes it actually, I think, creamy. Because yeah. when I put just MCT oil, it's still pretty dark and yeah, not creamy. My rating scale for bulletproof coffee has gone way up because normally awesome. I only want cream and that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that MCT powder, MCT oil powder, however you say it. Yeah, I find I don't do well with the regular oil. It bothers my stomach. Like I feel a bit nauseous after I okay consume it. So yeah. Anyways, so. Okay. There's my cute little mug. I cool love it avocado. so. Much. I just love, I love avocado themed things. I also love avocados. And, <laughs> and yes, fun fact. Well, I think it's fun. So there were a few summers where I volunteered at a camp and helped to run the kitchen. But when you're at camp, you don't go by your regular name, your birth name, you go by a camp name. And so right. when I arrived there, I didn't really have any idea what I wanted to do. So one of the, one of the campers said, well, what, what do you like? And I just, I looked over in the kitchen and there were avocados there that I had brought to eat during the week. And I said, well, I like avocados. So I like guacamole. He said, okay, there's your name guacamole. So they called me guac. <laughs> that was my name. <laughs> That's a great nickname. And one of my favorite foods. Yes. So there's my cute little mug. He and is so um, happy to be providing isn't it? coffee yes, right now. It's so happy. <laughs> it's a weird mug to drink from. I don't know if you can see the top. So yeah. anyways, and I'm right-handed and holding it with my left hand so you can see it. So it feels really awkward, but oh, anyhow. It's a left-handed friendly mug. Yeah. Well, it depends if I want to look at it, then oh. my right hand but it, I find it easier to drink from this side. So, and yes. I'm drinking coffee with heavy cream in it, which is my favorite. Yes. Mm. So. Yes. Mm. Very good. It almost, I, I don't think my nose would fit in that mug. <laughs> no, it might not. It's, <laughs> it's not because you have a big nose, but it's a small, oh, I think it's, it's a, because I have a big <laughs> a <little> nose. profile. <laughs> 
You have a small button uh, nose for your I guess lens. so. I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about like why you and I are doing this together. Mm. I'll just do a little intro about how the, the first time I met you and and how I thought there's no way we could be friends because you <laughs> came to my you came. So Dave and I had been married for a couple of years. You started dating Matt, who is Dave's brother. And you came to our house in Kitchener for the weekend and you barely said a word to me. And I kept asking you questions and you would answer. You were polite, but that was it. Like it never went anywhere. And it was a whole weekend. And I thought, what? I don't understand what's going on. <laughs> I thought we were friendly people and whatever. Like, and we even went out to a restaurant and I have this vivid memory of you sitting across from us in the booth with your head down the whole time. <laughs> And wow. anyways, I, I know, right? And you, I know I mentioned like this me. to you. I know. <laughs> it, it's crazy now when I think about it. I'm like, that's that's not you. There must have been something going on. I don't know. But must have been. anyhow, you guys were together for quite a while and then you ended up getting married. But I do remember you coming over to our house later and us then having little conversations. So they, less awkward. And I remember the first time we realized that there was, we had some things in common that we enjoyed. It was Cadbury chocolate. So we were talking about Cadbury chocolate. And I said, there's something about Cadbury chocolate that I like more than, you know, so like an arrow bar or something like that. And you said, yes, me too. There's something about the Cadbury chocolate. (laughs) And from then on, it was just kind of like, we had this little connection there. So then we found more and more things that we liked doing. And I remember you saying... We were, we used to go to second cup and have coffee when I would drop you off um, after you would babysit Lily, um, Mm -hmm. who was a toddler at the time. And I remember we both said that we liked, I think it was chai lattes from second cup, but that it was never hot enough when they would give it to you. It always has. and, And you looked at me and you said, it's like I'm in my own head when I listen to you talk. That was so funny. You probably said it a little more eloquently, but the idea was that I was saying out loud what you were thinking. We had we had both had that thought about about the coffee or about the chai tea latte. And anyway, so yeah. And then we ended up we knew we decided that we both enjoyed making greeting cards, handmade greeting cards. And then we had a business together for a little while. Mm. So we made mm-hmm. wedding, handmade wedding invitations and thank you notes too, along with yep. that. And so that was kind of fun. And then you went off to teacher's college. So, oh yeah. And hard to have that business together when we weren't living in the same town. So, yeah. Anyways. So we've just, our friendship has evolved. Well, I feel like it's more than a friendship because we're actually related mm-hmm. too, right? So, yep. and I, it's like a kindred spirit, but to me, it's more than that. Like, I don't like a a soulmate sounds too romantic, but it's kind of like that. Like we just, yeah, there's so many things that we both enjoy that we have in common that we, you'll often text me something that I've just been thinking, (laughs) for instance, this podcast, right? We've been talking about it for a couple of years. And then you just mentioned a few days ago, could we start recording next week? I said, yeah, I was totally thinking the same thing. I was going to text you. (laughs) See, it's like I'm inside (laughs) my own head when I talk to you right? Even with all the distance. So, so one of the reasons we decided to do this podcast is because we love talking about food and nutrition and self-care and all of those things. And we wish that we could spend more time together. We wish that we were closer. There's probably what, four hours between us driving distance. Yep. Yep. And so we thought this would be a fun way for us to do this, help people at the same time, have fun. And so that's why we're here. So yeah. Do you have anything else to add? Well, it's just so strange that I don't remember what was going. I don't remember that introduction to you guys. I don't (laughs) remember being so awkward. I am one of the least awkward people. Mm -hmm. I really like talking to people and getting to know people. So there, all I can think is there must've been something going on in my life or the other possibility. I, I can't pinpoint exactly where in our relationship, like Matt and I were, but Mm -hmm. I, I wonder if maybe I had a lot of questions going on in my head. And if I, maybe I just felt intimidated. Like I know I'm not myself when I'm really intimidated. I don't know what Mm -hmm. about you guys would have made me feel intimidated, Mm -hmm. but yeah, I, I don't remember that, but it's funny because I do remember that we shared that thing about Cadbury chocolate and it's funny because I have a very special memory for food related memories. Anything that has to do with food, I tend to remember much better 
And yeah. Matt, Matt will remember things about our relationship, things we've done, things I've said. And I'm like, oh, wow, that sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> I wish I remembered that I was there. And, you know, it's, I was there. I just, my memory is not yeah. as, as thorough as his, but, and as many things as we have in common, as connected as we are, I find also our differences are interesting. Some of them are humorous and then some of them are interesting because it enriches our relationship, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Like Mm -hmm. we're not just like two kind of people twinning around all the time with the same thoughts. Um, Mm -hmm. But we also have differences that I appreciate in you and things like that. You know, you're, you're very scientific and experimental in the way that you try things. And I really Mm -hmm. appreciate that. And I've learned a lot from you in that sense. And our height difference is really humorous to me because I <laughs> always picture us having a cooking show together, but then I laugh because of our height difference and how that would look on screen. Yeah. I would have to wear platform shoes or something. <laughs> and I would have to just be in a permanent squat position. Yeah. <laughs> how tall really are hard. you? Almost 5'10". Okay. So, so I'm like five, one and three quarters. So just to give okay. people the visual. That that yeah. Just so you can picture like. that for a minute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll give you a minute. Think about that. Yeah. 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 So when I think of our differences, I remember I love cilantro and I've always loved cilantro. And I remember saying that to you and you're like, it's off. Like I can't stand it. Yeah. And then you got pregnant and then you craved it and now you like it. <laughs> I don't just like it. <laughs> I love it. love it. Yeah. I go on, I used to go on rants about how terrible it was. Mm-hmm. Now I go on rants about how wonderful it is and how much yeah. I love it and I want it in yeah. everything. Yeah. It's crazy, right? <laughs> Sometimes I just bring cilantro with me somewhere so that I can like put can it on whatever it. I'm eating yeah. <laughs> or smell yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I love the yeah. smell of it. It, it. I find it's like a really fresh smell. It reminds yeah. me of spring. And so I went and bought an essential oil that scented so I could put it in my diffuser, but it's not the same thing. It, yeah. You just have to have the fresh herb. But you have to, you have to have it. Yeah. All right. So we're going to talk a little bit about who this podcast is for, who, so I have an online nutrition business. I help women who are over the age of 35 who are feeling fat, foggy, fatigued. And the, there's a little fluff in the air there. Are Get you into cleaning, this. cleaning your yes. aura? <laughs> cleaning my aura. <laughs> you will never hear me say that word in a like in a serious way because I don't understand but anyhow I have no judgment on anyone who is involved in that kind of stuff it, but it just I makes just... me think of Phoebe from Friends <laughs> Phoebe thank you did I tell you that I went to the Friends experience no okay well we could talk about that later but yeah I just went oh. to that that was a surprise birthday gift that is super fun from my family yes. I didn't even know so that fun. was a thing <clears throat> yes it's so cool so you like go into this it's in the mall of all places. It's in Yorkdale Mall in Toronto, okay. but it was great because that's easy to get to, easy to, like, you don't have to go downtown anyways. And so you go in the mall and then there's just this big area with this huge friend sign in front. And then you go in and you just kind of walk through and you go through each of the rooms or like any, like the, the key features of the show and you get to like have your picture taken and all the different things. And you can, so we like tried to move the couch and we were all yelling pivot, pivot, you know, <laughs> that scene. <laughs> so good anyways I'll I'll post some pictures of that but I lost my train of thought now oh yeah so I got into this part of nutrition because I had a life-changing experience where it was in my late 30s into my early 40s I was having a lot of fatigue I was having weight gain and brain fog and all of the ways that I had been eating and exercising up to that point didn't seem to work anymore I've always been able to maintain my weight and and feel good generally And so I really felt like something was wrong. I didn't know what it was. I was worried that this is what I was going to be like for the rest of my life. And it was really debilitating. It slowed me down. Like I, I like to do a lot of things. I'm busy. And I was just, I felt really bogged down by this fatigue and brain fog, especially. And so it was just a fluke that I ended up trying a keto diet thinking it was not healthy at all, but a friend of mine wanted to do it. And so I said, I would do it with her for two weeks just to, so I would have firsthand experience and I could say to people, don't do the ketogenic diet. It's all <laughs> butter and bacon and all of that. Right. Yeah. And so, but what I found was that I actually felt a lot better eating that way. So what I discovered is that I likely had a blood sugar imbalance that wasn't showing up on blood work yet. My pancreas was still keeping up with everything and keeping my blood sugar, you know, normal. So it wasn't showing up on the blood work, but 
as soon as I changed my ratio of fats, carbs, and proteins, I noticed a huge difference in my energy and brain fog. And then I eventually lost weight. It just felt fantastic. And so I ended up doing it for longer than, than two weeks, but I still felt like I wasn't getting all the nutrition I needed because it was really, it's really limiting in how much like fresh produce and stuff you can eat because right. you can easily go over that 20 grams of carbs per day. So right. I did some trial and error and tried things with, with increasing the amount of carbs through vegetables and that kind of thing to get to a point where I could still maintain those benefits of the energy, the brain clarity and the weight loss, but still eat lots of salad and vegetables along with the protein and the fat. And so I created a program and had to help other women do that. And so I've since learned that women over the age of 35, as the hormones are changing, the estrogen particularly is decreasing. We actually lose our ability to metabolize carbohydrates in the same way. And so we all become insulin resistant to a certain degree just because of the hormone change. I didn't, I didn't know that. And I don't think that's common knowledge. And then when you add in, um, the progesterone decreasing, the progesterone does a lot of things, but one thing that it does is it buffers that stress response on your body. So it minimizes the damage that stress causes. And so you're losing that as well. You're losing your resilience to stress. And I remember feeling like I don't have the mental capacity or the mental resources to deal with the same amount of stress anymore. Like what's wrong with me. Right. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so all of these pieces just kind of fell in into place and and so by changing the ratio of fats, carbs, and proteins, so not necessarily ketogenic diet, but in a way that it prioritizes good quality fats, moderate protein, and, and the carbs are lower, but the carbs that we do eat, they tend to come more from, from vegetables instead of grains. We right. you know, still eat grains from time to time, but it's just, it's not the staple of our diet that, that it used to be. So by doing that, I was able to help my body deal with stress right to help combat that re that reduction in the progesterone but then also just have the energy and the, the brain clarity and all those things so i just i teach other women to do the same thing so they don't have to go through all that trial and error and that frustration that i did so when i created my program i needed a guinea pig i asked you and you gratefully accepted the challenge and so we've just been working together for what like 3 3 years now yeah at least yeah. yeah yeah so yeah yeah. And for me, I being very tall, I can hide weight gain somewhat easily. I've always since being an adult hovered in that gray area between being a good weight and being overweight. So I was never really technically overweight, but I was always right there. And mm -hmm. my struggle was to some degree discipline, but I felt out of control of my choices. I felt mm -hmm. very out of control of the amount of snacking that I would do, the, the cravings for unhealthy food, patterns of behavior in my eating that were unhealthy. And I see, it seemed like nothing I did would kind of break that. And I, I never went hardcore into diets or anything like that, but I tried different things and nothing was ever successful. I mean, the best that I did was incorporate a regular exercise routine that when I maintained it, I seemed to do well, but nothing dramatic ever happened. I think I was probably stronger and healthier, but I didn't, you know, lose a lot or gain a lot or anything from doing that. And I just felt out of control of my own choices. Like, why do I not have enough willpower? And then of course I blamed myself for not being strong enough or not being disciplined enough or not having what it takes. And I think that just comes from a self-esteem place, like not mm. feeling capable of doing something that other people seem to be able to do, you know, and, and not mm -hmm. at all thinking that maybe it has to do with my body and what my body's telling me because of what mm -hmm. my body's doing. And I have no idea what it's doing in there. It's just, yeah, you know, and so trying this with you and, and following your guidance, you know, it was a huge shift in thinking and, and behavior, like eating behavior. It was a huge learning curve in terms of going from thinking, oh, I could never give up bread. Like that's just never happening to mm -hmm. figuring out what to do instead. And then just realizing the benefits. And so for me, it's been a th three plus year learning journey. And I've kind of done a little bit of this because I struggle with that emotional eating piece and, and that those sort of unhealthy habits that I'm still mm -hmm. trying to get a grasp on and get mm -hmm. in control of, but I discovered my most energetic self by eating lower carb and e eating this way. I had all kinds of other 
sort of minor health improvements, less kind of gastrointestinal discomfort, you know, no bloating. I had way more energy and just no cravings. Like that was the big one for me was cravings turned off Mm -hmm. and my full switch turned on. So the cravings were turned off and then I felt full after a reasonable amount of food. And that just felt freeing for me. That, that was the big thing for me, because I know for you, you were able to manage, you know, your lifestyle quite well through your various activities and and practices that you had going on. But for me, I was always trying to grasp at something and I always felt out of control. So this really helped me to realize that it wasn't just my ability, but it was actually helping my body to -hmm. work with me in getting what I wanted, which was better Mm -hmm. nutrition and more energy and fewer cravings that that I was Mm -hmm. battling. I I was able to free up all that space in my brain instead of fighting against cravings, you know, just living my life. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I definitely struggled with the cravings too. I felt like I was always thinking about food, Mm -hmm. but I had also heard, like, I was also of that mind that, you know, to keep your metabolism running and fueled properly, you should be eating every couple of hours. Right. And so that's kind of, that's what I did. I was one of those people who would, I carried food with me everywhere, partly to do that, but also that I didn't like that feeling when I got hungry because it, it also affected like me emotionally, like that hangry feeling. Right. Mm-hmm. And I, I do remember thinking like my, the, food and cravings and, and, and thinking about the next thing I'm going to eat, this is really taking up a lot of space in my brain. Like I'm constantly thinking about this. This doesn't seem right. (laughs) Like I should be able to eat and be satisfied until the next time I eat, even if it's just two hours from now. Right. And I I think that's just, it's all part of that whole blood sugar balance, metabolic hormones, all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. But it's, I, I I didn't know. I didn't know. Even with all my nutrition training, didn't know. We didn't, we didn't learn about that. (laughs) Mm -hmm. or at least Mm -hmm. I wasn't paying attention when they taught it. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know. It it doesn't um, sound like you. (laughs) No, that doesn't sound like me. I love nutrition school so much. I was like on the edge of my seat all the time. Like I just could not get enough of it. So I feel like, yeah, we just didn't talk. We didn't talk about it. Yeah. But yeah. And I mean, it's clearly a passion of yours. And, and I think something else we share is a love of food in general. We love foods Mm -hmm. that taste good. We love foods that are nutritious. We love to kind of experience food in Mm multifaceted ways, not just eating for fuel kind of a thing. We, and you know, I was scared that I would be giving that up. I, I didn't want to become like a robot just eating for fuel, which is fine. If that's how you are, not everybody's Mm -hmm. passionate about food the way I am. And maybe you Mm -hmm. are, but Mm -hmm. I didn't want to lose the joy of, of appreciating good tasting food. And this allows me to do both. Doesn't it? Like it, I didn't, cause I hated fighting with myself and struggling against these cravings for unhealthy nutrient absent foods. Yeah. Yeah. I think a good example of this is when so Sarah and I have a sister-in-law who we're also very, very close with. And so the three of us went away to a cottage for a couple nights in the in November. Was it November? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Sarah volunteered to do the grocery shopping and get all the food. And you were really you did like a fantastic job of bringing delicious foods with all different kinds of flavors, but that still helped us to stay on our healthy eating track. Right. Mm -hmm, Like, mm -hmm. so like just examples, there was that grilled shrimp dish that like, that was so delicious. Right. And then Mm -hmm. there were all different kinds of cheeses and we even grilled the halloumi cheese in the air fryer or baked it in the air fryer, the dips and the low carb crackers. And like, yep. there was just, and the meats, like oh, so many yep. delicious, delicious things. And that delicious Caesar salad with the crispy onions and the, the Parmesan yep. crisps. And like, yep. it was delicious, yep. but it all yep. healthy. <laughs> so. Yeah. Just, it, it was a real feast. And <clears throat> yeah. And we were trying to do simple things too. That was another mm-hmm. piece there because we were trying yeah. to relax and enjoy ourselves. Although we do find cooking, relaxing and enjoying when we're not. Yeah sort of doing it out of necessity. Yeah. But yeah, like it was just amazing. Like there were, there were no limits to the options really like for things that we enjoy eating that yeah. we could bring. And I mean, yeah, it was delicious. <laughs> yeah, it was delicious. So all that to say is that like, just because you, you may be deciding to change how you're eating to help fuel your metabolism and, and, and fix the fat, fog and fatigue doesn't mean that you're giving up delicious food. And there's still, there's still opportunity for you to eat those foods that wouldn't be on plan sort of thing. But to, to, when you're fueling your body properly, the majority of the time, 
then when you when you do have those indulgences, you're not it's not like shoving you down a rabbit hole of then binging on on junk food, right? Because mm-hmm. your body it doesn't, it doesn't need it. <laughs> yep. You enjoy that food in the moment. And there's a the whole mi- the mindset piece to it too. And we're going to be talking a lot about that in our podcast about the mindset piece that goes along with that, because mm-hmm. it certainly is possible to, you know, fall back into old habits and then eat the junk food. And so we'll talk about yep. that, but yeah. You know. And I mean, I am a classic example of someone who <laughs> has not grown up managing my weight by dieting really and exercising heavily. Like I'm not a super disciplined person that way. I'm, I don't have, I don't, I've never had that in me to be really regimented about that kind of stuff. And so for me to be able to gain control Mm-hmm. It says a lot, like, I mean, and, yeah. and to go from saying I could never give up this, I could never give up that. I mean, that just sounds ridiculous and unsustainable, you know, to go from that to going, I don't even miss those things. Like mm-hmm. when I'm fat adapted and my body mm-hmm. is fueling the w- being fueled by the way it should, you know? So yeah. Yeah. Anyway. And I find for me, when I start to crave those things again, that's like a light bulb going off. That's telling me, well, you need something. It's probably Mm -hmm. not the chocolate. Mm -hmm. You need some, I don't know, some self-care, you need some kind of comfort from something, but Mm -hmm. you're not going to get it from the food. You'll get it temporarily from the food, but is it Mm -hmm. worth it? Right. Yeah. That's one of those mindset things we'll, we'll chat about, but yeah. Yeah. So who is this for? It's for, I guess, anyone above what 35 30 like 30s and above who just feels like how can I make a change yeah (laughs) or why aren't things working anymore that worked yeah yeah for sure so it it, we're basically talking to women but these the principles and concepts that that we teach like they work for men too it's just that we're women and that our experience with all of the hormonal chaos (laughs) that just happens in every woman but particularly so in the late 30s and 40s we can just relate to that and, and share those experiences but so you know we were chatting before we we were recording here just about what 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 will our listeners get when they listen to our podcast so things like discussion that you can relate to hopefully you will find find our banter enjoyable <laughs> we certainly enjoy talking to one another motivation inspiration and and something that you can do right away like our goal is in every podcast to give you some kind of actionable strategy tool that kind of thing so that you can start making changes right away and yep. one thing that that I'm really passionate about is giving my clients things that they can do that won't overwhelm them. And we're going to yes. talk about that in the next podcast about what it's like when you're first starting your journey and that overwhelm and and how that often stops people from even getting started, right? Yep. Yeah. Exactly. So we're just we're going to give you bite-sized things to to take away and work on and yeah because we really we want to share information and we want people to actually use it so we're not going to give you like a whole ton of stuff all at once and then overwhelm you and then you'll you just leave and feel defeated (laughs) before you even start right yeah yeah Yeah. and (laughs) and the perspective that I can bring to this too is someone who has gone through it recently and it's almost like you know you've walked that trail before you can say oh I know what's coming up and this is how Mm -hmm. these are some strategies that that work to manage this thing that that's coming up down the road and at the same time as having gone down that road or that path I am also restarting that journey myself now having having had a, an extremely positive experience with feeling amazing and losing weight that I hadn't been able to lose ever before and then kind of just something happened a slippery slope and losing all that progress and even more <laughs> progress like kind of going into a deficit there and so I'm really wanting to to start again and it's not it's not that I'm at square one but it's that I've been on this path before so it's going to be easier to navigate because I know what's coming and then we can share that with you our listeners yeah what to expect yeah awesome is there anything else you want to chat about today are we good I think we're good until next time All right. So make sure you join us next time. We're going to be talking about mindset and particularly about how to have a very realistic idea, a realistic expectation of what this health journey looks like if you're going to follow along with us and and how 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 to get in the right mindset so that you're you're ready to go and it has nothing to do with motivation. So we'll explain more about that in the next podcast. Yay. All right.
All right. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks, listeners. And we'll see you in the next podcast. Bye, guys. Bye.